Welcome to the AKB48 Group News of the Week. This week there's a lot of stuff because I missed the last week, so this is two weeks worth of stuff, which is about seven pages of news. So let's go ahead and start. I go in order of 48 graduated members and 46. Let's start off with the preliminaries that happened. If you saw my stream that I did a couple days ago, you will see that we looked at who was in the preliminaries and we made our own Sosenkyu list of who is going to be in the Senbatsu, which you can go ahead and check out the recording of. It was very interesting, some of the picks that you guys made, but the list is there. I also streamed it on twitch.tv slash slopeclub, which I will be on more often. So go ahead and follow that. So there is something cool happening the 15th of July. There is not only going to be a stream with Nick from Nogi Ego, but there is also going to be a stream with Sosenkyo, which you guys can take part of. So be sure to follow that and be sure to look out for the 15th when stuff comes out for that. But that's not the only thing exciting for me. I guess I'm involving this in the 48 group for some reason. But I will also be taking more in part with The Slope, which is a channel that's coming out with a lot of creators. Basically, idle content creators make super cool stuff together for cool people like you. It's basically just about making cool stuff, which I mean, I'm super excited for. Having more people involved helping with the process makes the final product much better, so I hope you all look forward to it. There will be more upcoming plans as the date comes closer. But moving on to the next thing, actually something really exciting, the Sosenki will actually be streamed on YouTube. And this is for 246 countries around the world. The only ones that aren't involved are probably some miscellaneous ones, and Japan, China, and Thailand. If you're in Japan, of course you watch the broadcasts. And if you're in Thailand, you watch Workpoint, and in China, you watch Tencent. So those are the ways you can watch it, which means... I, I wasn't able to watch it when it was on YouTube originally, but now it seems like it has come back on YouTube. And now we can watch it in before America isn't able to, just like we're not able to watch that Hiragana music video. But yeah, super exciting and should make the process way simpler instead of trying to find a link here then that dies and finding another link that dies and going on and searching for different links. Much easier, a step in the right direction. Hopefully it'll take a step back in a different direction with something else. And speaking of the Sosenkyo, the single that actually came out, so you can submit your votes, actually got 1,591,164 copies, which is a lot more than at least what I was thinking and a lot of people were thinking because Sashi isn't in there, we have other top dogs that aren't in there. And seeing the numbers this high up means pretty good hope and again, like I said, the top dogs aren't there, which means it should be a little bit more interesting. The other days it sold only like a hundred thousand more, which means a lot of people probably bought it first day and are going to put in more votes. People by the truckloads, warehouse loads will probably go in and start voting. On top of all this cool so thank you stuff, they're actually going to do a Thanksgiving festival kind of thing. So the details are, it will be August 1st, it will be a ranked concert, and it will happen on both days at Yokohama Arena in Kanagawa, and then the unranked will happen on the 13th of August in Ichikawa City Cultural Hall in Chiba. So whether you like the ranked numbers or the unranked, you can go ahead and go to your own respective venue. But that's not all the 48 group news stuff. Actually, it seems like they're on US iTunes and come on, just get Spotify already. I mean, everyone else is on there. But yes, they are on US iTunes. SKE48, the singles from 2011-2015. We have Sashi Hararino solo. And we also have, for some weird reason, French Kiss on there. So yeah, those are available on iTunes if you're interested in that. I'm not sure about Apple Music though. And next up is a brand new drama. As you guys know, Majiska Gakuen. Well, it seems like there's going to be a different version of that coming this time with the name of Majimura Gakuen. Take a guess who the center is. The pushed person. Who is the most pushed person right now in AKB? Ha, huh, that's right. It's Yu Yui. And she is going to be the person in front. The main character. And she's going to have to go up and fight the ranks of different people, not Rapapa. It is actually going to be a different crew by the name of Hanagumi. And it is with members Okaberen, Mukaichi Mion, and Kurano Narumi. Oh, and by the way, we have a very interesting character played by Yokoyama Yui, who right here says they will get support from the erotic high school teacher and then the name 
played by Yoko Yamayui. So it seems like she's still in this. <laughs> it would have been funny if she was like still part of like the main like group <laughs> that's in charge. I think just sticking with the whole routine would have been pretty funny. But yeah, it seems like it'll begin airing on Nippon TV the 25th of July. So even though this isn't the Nogizaka versus AKB thing that they kind of teased before, it seems like this is something totally different and maybe they're sticking just with AKB or maybe they'll come in somewhere. You never know. Or maybe since that was kind of like an alternate reality, the Nogi thing was kind of like an alternate reality kind of thing and theories. But speaking of new series and new kind of stuff, there will be a new generation coming in for HKT48. They will be auditioning for people at 11 and 18. As we know, they tend to get them a little bit younger. Like Nogizaka gets them to like, until like 24 or something like that, 22. But it seems like they will have until July 1st. So maybe you could apply here or you could apply to the whole Sakamichi thing that's happening soon too, which I talked about a couple weeks ago. But SKE. Let's go to them. We have the new song, Ikanari Punchline, with of course the center, as we know, Matsui Jurina. And that comes out good old July 4th. Just in time for 4th of July. Right, fellow Americans? And now let's go into more individual members, starting off with Tanaka Miku, who released a solo music video, which she promised before for Sosenkyo. So yes, this music video is about her in her hometown, and I recommend giving it a watch if you're interested in this member. Also, I guess if you're like interested in seeing a little bit more about her hometown, you can go ahead and check it out on HKT's official channel. Next up is Sashi Hararino, as we know. So popular and always busy. She is going to do sh a showroom stream, but she will be the host of one of the shows for one of the days. Nogizaka is on a different day, but both of them are hosting this one show on separate days, which means they're probably not going to be together. The show will be called Negojita Showroom and not really sure what the show is going to be about. If there's different hosts throughout the days, I don't know if they're going to host it and have a topic to talk about. If it's like in a studio and they're in charge. Not really sure about the details, but it actually starts on June 18th. And Nogizaka will be Wednesdays, while Sashihara will be Fridays. And one last little thing that I thought was super funny that happened on Twitter. Uh, as we know now from SKE48, uh, she was caught with a guy by a fan? Yeah, she basically tweeted something and the guy replied to the tweet with a picture of her next to what looked like a guy. And then everybody was like, oh, what's going on, what's going on, what's going on? And then she's like, uh, what? And then she like took a picture with her, which is actually someone who's a theater actor. And she's... I mean, she just has short hair. That's why people thought it was a guy. <laughs> She's like, okay. So I guess this kind of worked out in her favor because now she got, you know, some attention towards her. Like, oh, is this a scandal right before So Thank You? And then she's like, nah, gotcha. Like I said in my tweet, who needs Bunshu when you got these type of fans who probably didn't even know unless now planned it all. No, but I mean, clearly now wouldn't do this right before So Thank You. And I mean, this could have been planned. That's enough conspiracy theories, but now it's pretty safe. So I think there shouldn't be that much worry, especially now that we know who it is, even though there was nothing to worry about in the beginning. Now let's move on to graduated members, starting off with Watanabe Mayu, who is going to be the face of a certain game that's going to release in China soon. This is for the game Crossgate, which comes out the 12th of June, and she is like the spokesperson, and there's pretty cool image to go along with it. And that is pretty much all that I have on that. <laughs> Next up, let's go into our favorite section of the show, the Kawaii Rina graduated section, where we see exactly how popular she is. First up, she's in another commercial for Rakuten, which you can go ahead and check out down below. We've seen Rakuten commercials with her before, here's more of them. But that's not the only thing she's in, she's also going to be cast in a drama. Get ready for this title name. It's Kenko de Bunkate Kina Saite Gendo no Seikatsu. And this is based on a manga, and it seems like this is about the work life of a government staff worker. Uh, if you're interested in this, this actually starts July 17th on Fuji Terebi. Always good to have a Kawairina section. Also, what's good is a Matsui Rena section. And this will be for the morning NHK drama, which 
is usually kind of a big deal because this is where all the women watch well, women because that's like I think that's the biggest demographic that watches this but anyway off topic this will be their 99th drama and this is the title of Manpuku which starts in October seems like she might be playing more of a side character not like a main character but this is based on what it says here the true story of Ando Masako the wife of Nissin Food Products founder Ando Momofuku Momofuku Fuku there we go so if you're interested in that interesting in a morning drama which is usually geared towards women go ahead and watch it next up let's talk about the Nagao Maria and this will be for a VR drama we got Nagao VR hmm this will be for the drama Hanabi and from the trailer it looks pretty interesting how they mix around the VR with it go ahead and check that out down below and it's supposed to be an interactive drama and by interactive I imagine they mean it's kind of like you're there watching but yes it seems like this will be available on PlayStation VR in the summer so hopefully people can find it download the 4k because 4k is usually for the VR and then we can all watch it Next up is Maya Asuko who's going to be in a drama based on the autobiography of Okada Mari. Uh, the title is pretty long, I think it's Gakko e Ikinakata Watashi ga... Oh, no wait, I missed... Well basically it has a really long title. Gakko e Ikinakata Watashi ga Anohana Kokosake o Kakumade. I probably had to cut that up just because it's, it's too long of a title to say one one way right now. My Japanese is not that good. But basically, what this is going to be about is about, again, the person we mentioned, Okada Mari, which actually screenwrit and directed Anohana. You've seen that, that's uh, anime. I think it was also a drama at one point. Uh, even AKB0048. So, pretty interesting that they picked this character. And by character, I mean Maya Asuko. <laughs> and the story is basically how she went from a shut in to a screenwriter so it seems honestly this seems really interesting and I, I'd really be interested in watching this uh, this drama will start September 1st and even Nogizaka will play the theme from like the 13th single so this must have been like requested or something since it's kind of an old single so pretty cool stuff I'll definitely check that one out let's move on we have Shimazaki Haruka who will be cast in a movie for Nisekoi and when you think of her and you think what character can she possibly play in Nisekoi? The answer is obvious. If you haven't read or watched Nisekoi, she will be playing the character Marika, which is kind of, kind of suits her a little bit in a weird way. Really recommend watching this one out. There's a lot of other people that are pretty well known in this, so this one definitely should be on the list. Basically, what the story is about is about false love and how one guy is part of the Yakuza, but then likes a girl who's half and then but really likes another girl that he likes but he doesn't know that she likes him basically pretty simple but except it has a whole concept of like oh this key whoever holds the locket means I'm the true love it's kind of cheesy but at the same time with these characters and these actors it should be pretty entertaining okay you thought I was over with Kawarina but I'm not one more thing she's going to be in a stage play called Kare Phone and it seems like this will be based on the title manga of the mobile app manga Palsy. Again, that's all I know about this. Oh, this will be running at the Alternative Theater Tokyo. Ooh, Alternative. Uh, from the 4th to 21st of October. Really exciting news that I'm really excited for. The return of someone very special. Oshima Yuko is going to return. And she's going to be in a stage play. She's been missing for a little bit. Uh, nothing solid that I saw that had backup evidence of where she was going. People saying studying abroad, some people saying taking a break. I see more people leaning towards studying abroad, but again, nothing really confirmed. But we do know she's back. We've seen news articles, even Akimoto Saika tweeted, hey, she's back, like in English. So, she's back. Yes. Anyway, this stage play, Crime and Punishment. It is a stage adaptation of Fyodor. Oh, I'm not even going to pronounce that last name. Classic novel, Crime and Punishment. And she's going to be playing one of the main characters. This will come out January 2019. Super excited to see some more news about her. Glad that she's back. Glad that she's healthy. Glad that she's fine. Someone else who I'm glad is fine is Kawamura Mahiro, aka Rati, 
who has recently graduated Nogizaka 46 and it seems like she's already going to be in a stage play. This will be for Momotaro the stage play based on the classic story. This will be run at the Lumine, the Yoshimoto in Tokyo from 23rd July to August 10th. Anyway, someone else who has a theater play and first one right after graduating, Ikumarina, being the lead role playing the sensei from oh, Negima, that's what it's called. I've read some of this. Decent, depending on your taste. Not really close to my taste or else I would have finished it, but it might be your taste. And this actually is going to take place at the AIIA 2.5 Theater in Tokyo as we talk about a lot. So look forward to this in July. I'm sure this will be a lot of fun and I hope she wears that red hair. Okay, now we go to the 46th section. And as we know, they're recruiting, but now we have a little bit more details about the recruitment that the whole Sakamichi series is doing. This will be from ages 12 to 20, and they'll be accepting applicants until the 29th of June. So go ahead, if you're between those age ranges, try your luck, go ahead and apply, and see how far you get. Maybe you could be the next member of Nogizaka, Kanji Kiyakizaka, or Hiragana Kiyakizaka. Never know. Really interested to see what comes out of this, how they decide which person goes to which group, and I'm hoping that it's not like AKB. I'm hoping it's a little bit more like, hey, these are the people that are interested in you. Now the person who's up for choice gets to pick the person. I think that's a better solution. Next up is Keakizaka 46 confirming that they're going to have another Keaki Republic this year. This will be held the 20th to the 22nd of July at the Fuji Q Highland Conifer Forest. Don't know where that is, but I've heard from other people that this was a fun concert, and hopefully we can see everyone back. And Shida Monica comes back, Techi comes back. It's in July, so I think that gives them enough time to come back. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Next up is a new music video that came out for Hiragana Kiyakizaka. And music video, I think you should definitely watch it, of course. It's an interesting music video because it introduces talents of different people. Might be a little cheesy because they're showing all the talents and sometimes you're like, okay, why is that girl like just hitting a volleyball randomly? But second half when they all come together, great choreography and song really picks up. So watch it for that reason, if not because you're interested in Kiyakizaka, right? And next up is, as we know, Hiragana is doing a stage play and it's called Ayumi. They split the two different teams into two different sections. They're like instruments or something. It's not like first gen and second gen. It's like a mixture of both of them, but in two different groups performing on different days. Well, it seems like they're going to air that. TBS Channel 1 that airs Nogi Ego will bring you the content. On July 28th, they will air, here we go, Harmonica. And on the 29th, it will air Cast the Nets. Not sure at what time, I'm pretty sure you can check out the link below to see what time those will air. I'm pretty sure afterwards they'll show up somewhere anyway. I'm interested to see exactly how they act and how this performance goes. Next up, let's talk about some commercials with Nogizaka 46 and 7-Eleven. There's a lot of different commercials. If you look at the links down below, there's like five or six. And they're all little alternatives, different people speaking the main role, different people being the clerks, different people doing different actions. If you want to watch all of them, you can. There's no one like specifically for one person. Like there's no Mayan 7-Eleven one. It's like a mixture of different people. Another commercial they're in is Meiji as always. And this is for their Meiji Essel Super Cup. Basically it's Shirashimai uh, beating up a punching bag. And it has Saito Asuka who's sad and crying. But then when both of them eat ice cream, they become happy. Pretty nice short little commercials. Uh, there's actually a link down below with both of them together and you can go ahead and watch it. I definitely recommend watching it for the angry Mayan and the sad Asuka itself. And something that's coming out is the Tokyo Dome Blu-ray. Finally Nogizaka, finally doing something right on time, not taking two or three years to release a Blu-ray. Or like Kiyakizaka who hasn't released really any, you know, except for that album, right? I guess that kind of counts. But this will come out July 11th, pretty soon coming up. And it seems like there's a limited edition and there will be a normal edition, each with three discs. In the limited edition, you have 
a luxury photo booklet, five postcards and five trading cards, as well as bonus videos of the making and the day two opening. So I imagine it's only day one from the looks of it since both day one and day two had the same track list. Seems like limited is the way to go on this one. All right, next let's move on to more individual members, starting off with my Hiragana and Kiyakizaka in general, Oshiman Sasaki Kumi, who got appointed as the captain about time that she finally got announced as captain. It's been a long time coming and everybody's pretty much has seen it coming. So congratulations to you. Let's go ahead and lead Hiragana to victory. <laughs> and speaking of leading Hiragana to victory, we have a hiatus from Hiragana Kiyakizaka with Kageyama, who is going to take a hiatus because she wants to enter into a very high university, one that few idols go into, Tokyo University, I forget the full name, I think it's Todai, but it seems like she wants to go here and thinking about her future, wants to take a little hiatus from Kiyakizaka in order to enroll in this school, you know, do that entrance exam, whole fiasco that is always troubling. Of course, unfortunately, this means she will not become part of the tour that's going to happen for Hiragana. So it seems like it will not be a full lineup, but it's okay. They're not like kanji where it's 21 minus 1 or whatever that meme is. Next up, we have Shirashi Mai, who is in a commercial for Teliamo, which is probably pronounced wrong, but it's, uh, you know, contacts, color. She wears them. She's in the commercial. She's cute. You can watch it. And that actually does it all for the news. Pretty good note to leave off on. Again, go to twitch.tv slash slope club in order to watch Nick from No Diego on the 15th, as well as the Sosenkyo live streamed. If you've ever watched those SoCal videos where it's a lot of people reacting to the Sosenkyo, well, you get to experience it live on Twitch through twitch.tv slash slope club. Go ahead and check it out. You can go ahead and follow to know exactly when it goes up. And as always, go ahead and subscribe. Leave your comments down below, like the video, and share it with someone that you know. As I say every single time, thank you all for watching.